Hi folks, welcome. I am Mr. Green for Go Green Investing, the channel where we keep our investments between the lines and our money in the green. Today I'm bringing to you the top 10 reasons why you may be failing as a retail investor. Now these top 10 reasons are not in any particular order, so I will go through each one individually and explain as we go. Hopefully this will help you to better accomplish your goals as a retail investor. Starting with number 10, IRT, Individual Risk Threshold. We define IRT as a scaled self-assessment to determine an individual's point of critical mass respective to their budget, expenses, total income, lifestyle, anticipated life changes, and ROI expectations, your expectations for return on investment. If we apply this to a one to five scale, we can determine of ourselves exactly how effective we can be and how much heat we can stand in the kitchen with respect to our investments. This is a very intelligent way to make a physical measurement in which to assess our risk. And at number nine, personal finance priorities. In life, it is important to prioritize our responsibilities. Naturally, before we consider retail investing, it's very important to decide after our individual risk threshold measurement exactly what our priorities happen to be. Priorities always are pay our utilities, our rent, our mortgage, put food on the table, have an emergency fund in the bank in case of a rainy day, and to always consider the risk involved with spending money that we may not have. Thus, it is very important that each of us measure our priorities in order to become more effective retail investors. Number eight on our list is research. Now folks, I know it seems obvious that research would be an integral part of investing. Unfortunately, most of us just do not know how to approach research. Many of us do not know how to look at legal records. We don't know how to go in and look at SEC filings. We don't know how to interpret all of the language that is used oftentimes to describe exactly what is going on with investments and securities. Thus, it's very important to familiarize ourselves with the glossary of terms, to study hard and understand exactly what terminology is used and how it's applied in investing. In order to be effective and to lower that IRT ratio and to increase our chances of success, it is always important to do our due diligence and research. Number seven on our list is proper entry and exit strategy. Have you ever driven a fast car? It's great when it accelerates really quickly and you're flying down the road, hopefully at the speed limit. But isn't it important that the brakes work just as well as the accelerator? Well, certainly it is. Same thing applies to investments. For those of you that don't have a, an effective entry and exit strategy, Basically, what you're doing is throwing to chance the fact that you may have gotten in at the wrong time and you may get out at a worse time. It's very important that we do the diligent research in order to take an advantageous entry point and always have a plan to exit. If you don't, you can assure yourself of loss of profits. Number six on our list is everyone's an advisor. You know, it's funny how when it's your money, everyone else becomes the expert when it comes to how to invest your money. Therefore, it's very important to take advice from professionals who actually know something about money and being successful in the business world. We wouldn't go to our doctor to fix our car. We wouldn't go to our local butcher to diagnose an electrical problem in our house. So why would we talk to someone completely unqualified in the business world to discuss our investments. Well, we wouldn't, it's not great practice. But it's funny how everyone becomes an expert when it comes to someone else's money. Don't fall victim to that. Always do your research, talk to professionals, and get a second opinion. Number five on our list is lottery mentality. Folks, the retail investment world is no cakewalk. You can lose all your money and lose it very quickly. It's like walking into a casino. So if you're one of those people who's going to take all of your liquid cash and put it into an investment and think you're going to hit the lottery, think again because those chances are very slim, just like playing the lottery. Now, stories that happen like that are very inspiring. We see someone invest in a security they really didn't have any experience and all of a sudden they just hit the jackpot. It can happen without question, but too many folks buy into that dream and come away sorely disappointed. Remember, 
unrealistic expectations lead to heavy, heavy levels of disappointment, especially when it comes to your money. So make intelligent decisions as it relates to your individual risk threshold and do your due diligence. Number four on our list is you can't afford to lose. In other words, you've taken all of your money and you've put it into a retail investment in the hopes that you're going to hit the jackpot. And unfortunately, oftentimes that does not happen. In other words, folks, if you don't have the money to lose, don't invest that money from the outset. Too many people make the mistake of thinking that it's going to be quick earnings, quick money, and quick lifestyle change. That Ferrari money doesn't come easy, folks. It usually takes a long grind to get there and a lot of knowledge and practice. Don't fall victim to that mentality because you can't afford to lose. Number three on our list is panic buying and selling. You can't believe how common it is for me to hear from folks in my community that state that they sold or bought under panic and duress. That's the worst decision you can make. It's very, very important as a retail investor to make sure that you take a deep breath, relax, and realize that decisions made under duress are not usually the right decisions. You have to do an individual risk threshold assessment with respect to your level of duress and what you can tolerate personally and emotionally. If you don't do so, you're going to make panic-driven decisions, which often lead to lack of profits and failure. Number two on our list is failure to predict trends. Now that is no easy task for anyone, even a professional who is very, very seasoned. You look at someone like Warren Buffett, who seems to be very successful at predicting trends, if not setting them, right? So the better you become at interpreting trends, the better investor that you will become. For example, if there's a major airline crash and planes are grounded and that's going to affect the revenue stream for airlines, you're probably going to see airline stocks start to decline. Conversely, if you look at electric vehicle development, uh, and the trends towards the release and the production of more electric powered vehicles, you will probably see an increase in the value of stock of, say, batteries. So it's very important to be able to watch television, read the news, look at real life catalysts that affect not only our world, but money and how business trends happen. In that way, you will be able to become a more successful investor. And finally, number one on our list of the top 10 reasons why you may be failing as a retail investor, emotional attachment. Folks, a mentor of mine taught me something long ago, and this relates to something that's intangible, like a stock or an investment or a bond or a house or a car. And the phrase is this, never fall in love with something that doesn't love you back. Folks, these inanimate objects are tools that we use for our enjoyment and for our gain. They have no emotional attachment to us. When we make decisions about those particular things, especially our money, based on emotion, it is so easy to let that emotion affect our judgment, whereby we often lose. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to win. So. Always take into consideration to keep your emotions out of your decision making, especially when it comes to your money. In conclusion, those are my top 10 reasons why you may be failing as a retail investor. I hope these items help you to reassess your strategy, and I hope that they are helpful to make you the most successful retail investor possible. For Go Green Investments, I'm Mr. Green, and I appreciate you watching.